All right, good morning. Today is October the 8th, 2023. A big thing happened yesterday. War broke out in the Middle East. Now, I'm old enough to remember 50 years ago the so-called Yom Kippur War, I believe they called it. Well, that's what this is, another one. It's on the anniversary. So we've been hearing for several years that there was going to be a big event <laughs> that was going to scare everybody. I don't know if this is the big event, but nobody knows how big this is going to be. But essentially, the Palestinians bulldoze through the wall between Palestine and Israel and rushed the settlements there in Israel and took prisoners, a lot of prisoners, and killed a bunch of people. And um, this happened before where the uh, Palestinians took prisoners, not in the in 50 years ago, but, and of course, the this is war. They Israel has declared war. All these other events since the last war 50 years ago, they haven't declared war. But a declaration of war has been issued this is pretty big they're saying iran is behind it and if you know the bible you know that daniel in the book of daniel the one of the angels i'm not sure if it was gabriel or what was delayed because he was contending with the prince of persia my Bible knowledge off the top of my head does not allow me to, to be any more specific than that. But Persia is Iran. This is a biblical event, probably. I can't say more than that. That's not my... The thing that I do the most is mess around with prophecy and all that. Uh, you know, I've heard an awful lot of it, but that's not my specialty. There are others that specialize in that, that work for Jesus. Some of them will be putting their two cents in and have been. So you can watch them and see what they say this all means. Haven't fed the deer in several days, and they're very hungry, and seem like they've slowed down a little bit on the rut. But there, it's not over because the 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 uh, boss man out here is still bellowing and making it known that he's in charge. Uh, it's quite chilly this morning. This is our coldest morning of the fall so far. Um, I was going to get up and go hunting this morning, but I think it's time for me to be honest. I have trouble. I get up early, 4.30 or 5, <laughs> but it takes me a while to get going. For years, most of my hunting is, is the afternoon hunt. Uh, and deer move in the afternoon too, you know, that, so there's no, plenty of deer move in the afternoon, so I might get up and go in the morning some, but I, much more likely to go in the afternoon, and, um, uh, I need to be honest with myself, but that's okay, you know, I just, I, I did go, um, yesterday morning, and got out there before daylight, and not a deer moved. 
but deer move in the afternoon. They lay around all day a lot of times, and they get hungry and thirsty, and then they finally, they really are waiting to get up. You know, they they move early morning, and they move late. Okay, back to what's happening in the worldview. Like I said, that's not my specialty, but I'm thoroughly convinced that big things are happening. You know, I can't, couldn't say when Jesus is coming back. I couldn't tell you when the apocalypse is. I couldn't tell you when the rapture is. I couldn't tell you any of those. And none of those things can, can be known by man. But I would say that this is a wake-up call to those of you out there that are on the fence with Jesus. You got one foot in the world and one foot on, on the side of Jesus. I say you're fence straddlers. And it's a barbed wire fence, and it's going to be very comfortable, um, uncomfortable where that barbed wire is catching you as you straddle that fence. I think this is a good morning to urge you fence straddlers to go ahead and hop on over to the side of good and get your foot out of the devil's backyard, I call it. It's time. I'm asking you. I'm urging you. Come on over. Come on over to the good army. Come to the good side. There's all kinds of reasons. Use your common sense. If the world isn't coming to an end pretty soon, your end is going to come pretty soon. I don't care how old you are. Nobody lives hardly past 100 years, and very few do that. Most of the time, it's 70, 80, something like that. I'm 72 right now, I think. And I've already lost one sister and one brother. One of them was very, very resistant to Christ. Although he certainly wasn't from lack of me telling him about Christ. And the other one did come on over before her demise. And confess Christ. Okay, how do you do it? I can't believe I've been going eight minutes, but I have. All right, you just asked Jesus. Jesus, would you please save me? I'm ready. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I've incurred the death penalty according to God's holy lie, uh, holy law. And I want you to save me. I will... Accept your blood sacrifice to save me. Please save me. Now, if you're on the camp that can't see who Jesus is, I got a solution for that, too. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. So just ask him, Jesus, I know you're somebody. I know you're very important. But I can't see you as God and I can't see you as the Savior. So I'm asking you to show me, and he will do it. His, that's his promise. We're going to end it with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.